you're saying you got to get back in shape first. So yeah, like what is uh what do you mean by in shape though? Like you want to put on so lose fat? my excess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so lose my excess body fat, which I have excess right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that'll be gone in a month or two. Um, it'll be build my muscle back up to where I'd like to walk around with a very low body fat percentage with, with, uh, about at about 130 pounds, walk around weight with a low mm-hmm. body fat percentage of what that much muscle build back up. Um, and then I want to regain my flexibility, not just to what I had, but I'm actually about to start working on something. I can't say what it is right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it's a new program. I'm going to be trying to try to finally achieve full splits. Uh-huh. Um, functional splits, like cold yeah, like, splits, ooh, like kick, kick that, kick that leg up straight up and keep yeah. it man damn style. Because I'm constantly like, how can I make myself more dangerous? Well, I, my, I, I have the, the ability. I just need to increase my physical ability to do the ranged fighting, you know, to its biggest potential. So I can work on flexibility. So I'm going to try it. It's going to take maybe six weeks to three months, something like that. Um, hopefully, but yeah, I'm going to get my flexibility. So there's all these little aspects right now. My super short term goal is to just be able to train two or three sessions without getting a new injury. Mm. <laughs> Cause right now, every time I train, I have a new injury. It's they're minor, but it's like, Oh, my back is tweaked. Oh, my inner thigh is tweaked a little bit. Oh, my neck's a little bit tweaked. So, you know, it's slowing down my progress, but that's what happens when you let yourself atrophy. You literally are like a white belt again, physically. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe not a white belt, maybe like a green belt again, physically. Mm-hmm. And you have to build back up and get your body used to doing all these explosive movements. Cause Taekwondo is explosive, man. My style, mm-hmm. it's like the, the twisting and turning and sudden jerking of the head and twisting of the neck. And, you know, I mean, you've seen spin kick, you know, you throw spin kicks, you know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%, 100%. <laughs> like, uh, Yeah. You know, I think I could probably help you out with that because in terms of putting on lean muscle mass and, um, and, you know, making sure like everything is moving properly in terms of mobility, at least I could guide you in it, you know, cause I, I'm I'm doing it for myself because I'm 42. Uh, I don't know how how, how old you are right now. You're 36, 36. Okay. Okay. So we're not like, you know, uh, too far apart and like for putting on muscle mass, Like, this is something I started looking into a a lot, and it's called high intensity training. Not to be mistaken with high intensity interval training, right? It's not the same thing, you know? Uh, High intensity interval training, that's what everybody is doing essentially, is like they're they're putting together, let's say, uh, you know, 10 exercises, and they do it back to back, and it's highly explosive, and they go for reps or they go for time. And, uh, you know, and they get like a, so they're kind of mixing in, uh, you know, weight training with, you know, cardio kind of thing, right? High intensity training is where, and is where you train really hard, right? Really intense. And it has nothing to do, it, that has nothing to do with how much you're lifting, actually. It, it's, it's a crazy thing. So really intense and then really um, uh, infrequent and really short. So very intense, very short period of time and very infrequent. Okay. And this is not a new thing. This is an old thing that not a lot of people subscribe to because it, it's uh, it flies in the face of uh, convention. You know how, like, you know, for, for people who are bodybuilding and all that, and who are into uh, conditioning, uh, you know, they, they talk about doing as much as you possibly can you know, like a lot of volume and training frequently, and you have to blah, 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 do, you know, all this craziness, uh, you know, to get results. But this school of thought, and these are, these are based on, it's based on science and training principles on really sound science and, and training principles. And there's studies to back it up. And there's examples of it to back it up. But the problem is there's no money to be made if you train this way. There, <laughs> there, there, there really isn't. Because the thing is, you would, you would see your trainer like once a week that's it you know so so they're not getting that that money right (laughs) yeah exactly and and what if i tell you yeah you can literally just do um you know to get your cardio up to get your size to get your strength up you yeah you just need one workout a week if you don't want to be if you want to be lean then just focus on your 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 food and um 
I don't want to, I'm not going to get into all the little details because, you know, we're going to talk for like 10 hours, but this is right, what I'm right. studying. But, you know, like um, back in the day, right, there was Arnold Schwarzenegger and there was a guy called Mike Menzer. And they both competed against each other at the 1980 uh, Mr. Olympia. You know, mm -hmm. I I'm, don't anybody listening. If you guys, if I'm wrong with the dates or whatnot, you know, or some wording, just let me know. No big deal. But they competed each, each against each other. And that was what 1980 was when Arnold wanted to make a comeback to, you know, bodybuilding. Like he kind of, I think he took some time off and then he wanted to come back and he competed against Menser. And Menser was, according to some people, I think he was supposed to win. But then Arnold had kind of everybody in his pocket because he was Arnold. Mm -hmm. And so from there, Menser just got disgusted, like, and just dropped the sport. Like he said, you know what, I'm, you know, it's not, it's too subjective and it's too rigged. So he, he left uh, bodybuilding, but he continued to train people and develop, you know, as a, as a coach and everything and do, uh, doing his thing. But what I'm, here's, here's the kicker. Arnold was training and obviously they were both on, on, on gear, right? Gear. So yeah, the, 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 the playing field was, was leveled. You don't have to worry about that. Arnold was training something like 30, 26 hours in the gym per week, something insane like that, you know? And Menser was training three times a week, half an hour, <laughs> literally. But there, there's going to be like, if you research it, some people are going to say, no, no, that's not true. Menser was just saying that, but you know, we saw uh, people who've trained with him, seen him at the gym, blah, 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 blah. And it's, he trained a lot more than that and, and so on. And he built his physique on with volume as opposed to what he was preaching, you know, which is heavy duty, high intensity training and all. But um, yeah, so that's the thing. So it, and this comes from, um, you know, those Nautilus machines. I've heard yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. It, like you see in the gyms, you know, like, it, well, there's like other companies now and all, but that was the first machine that was invented to, to, you know, for bodybuilding and to build your, build up your muscles and all. So it was a guy, uh, the, the founder was called Arthur Jones and Arthur Jones was the one who created those machines. And he was ahead of his time in terms of knowledge and, and machines and how to like uh, body mechanics and blah, 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 and how to, how to set it up so that, you know? And then from there, um, like Mike Menser was actually, uh, he was taught what, or inspired, but it, or he worked for Arthur Jones at one point, you know? And, and then there was a couple of other names in there, but essentially those guys are, are from the school of high intensity training, like training super intense, super short, and very, very uh, infrequently. And the yeah. premise behind it is that, well, actually, you don't need to lift heavy weights. What you need to do, you don't use your muscle to lift heavy weight. What you're trying to do is use the minimum, the least amount of weight possible so you could contract your muscle against. So you could exert as much effort as you can and then burn that muscle out. So you go to failure. And if you achieve momentary failure, muscle failure, right? What that means is that you created the training effect. You created a training effect. What you do afterwards is you do absolutely nothing. You rest. And people actually get it wrong. Most people are overtrained. But it, like you're supposed to rest um, anywhere between. It's going to vary from person to person because uh, there's genetic factors and environmental factors and all. But if you rest enough, technically, the next time you come back, you should be stronger, literally. So you're lifting more. You're doing more reps or you're lifting more weights. If you're not getting stronger or doing more reps, you haven't recovered yet. So you back off, right? So it's a little bit of trial and error at the beginning, but you're essentially training. At the beginning, you might be training once every four days. Every four days you train. And then after that, as you get stronger and better at contracting your muscles really hard against the resistance and getting to that uh, momentary muscular failure, then you back off and you go to like once every seven days. And wow. supposedly, if you do it right, you could get jacked. You could get as big and as strong as your genetics will allow in a year. Wow. You suck <laughs> three years. And if you really suck five, <laughs> it's, a, it's insanity, right? It doesn't make any sense. But then when they explain it, so I'm like following this, uh, this guy called, and I, I started like, diving into this and, and, and paying a lot of attention to it because I had my last podcast, I did it with Steve Maxwell. You, you ever heard of him? 
No, no. Um, well, is he's, he a fighter? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's like a jiu-jitsu world champion. Oh, uh, jiu-jitsu, he, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he wrestled back in his day too. He's a personal trainer. Uh, he was on Joe Rogan like four times in the past, I don't know how many years. And he also trained Joe Rogan at one point. And so we, we talked about this. And he's, he's also 68 right now, I think. 68 or 69 years old. And he's still in really good shape. And he talks a lot about longevity, how to do things right, how like you want to essentially train smart so that you know you could keep you could you could stay in shape and keep doing what you're doing later on in life, and that a lot of things that are done now um, are are what people are doing now to stay fit to get bigger and all that. It's it's all it's a lot of it is nonsense, and not to say that it doesn't work. It can work, but you could get there with a lot less time, a lot less injuries. And you'll be much better off as you grow older. So he started talking about it. And then after that, I watched uh, a podcast of him with another dude called uh, Drew Bay. And these guys are from the same school of thought, you know? So training, training really intense, training really, uh, training really um, uh, for brief periods of time infrequently. And of course, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Anyways, I forgot. But yeah, so... Then Drew Bay, like he has like this little private forum where you could join and uh, you got to pay for it, but it's not much. You join. So I joined it because I wanted to learn more. Right? And the more I'm learning, the more I'm thinking to myself, wait a second. So you're telling me, and I'm going to test this out for myself because that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm training a lot less. Like I, I'm working out once a week, essentially in ter- for, for weightlifting. Right. Right. But my martial arts though, like um, I, I trained out pretty much anywhere between five to, to seven times a week, you know? So there's a lot of martial arts training that I'm already doing. So I have to factor that in because with all that training, I need more time to recover. I can't, I'm going to burn myself out and eventually um, uh, get injured uh, in a, a lot easier if I, if I train. And this is, what, this is what I was doing before. I was lifting weights five times a week and training anywhere between five to 10 times in martial arts a week. Gosh, man, that's zero time for recovery. Unless you like are the world's fastest recoverer and you have like a one day recovery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and the thing is, I still manage to, uh, to recover, you know? So I think that my genetics allow me for, uh, to my recovery ability, allowed me to train that much and still be, a, still not like uh, fall into pieces, but I was still falling, falling to pieces bit by bit. And then after I had that podcast with Steve, I'm like, wait a second. Now, if this guy's right, and he's been around a long time, you know, and he's trained a lot of people and, you know, he has a lot of, um, and he's done a lot of martial arts in his life too. He's done a lot of wrestling. He's a lot of done a BJJ, you know, he does like self-defense stuff and all. So I'm like, Hmm, I think I'm going to take this guy a lot more seriously now. And it really like go into this and dive in and see, see for myself, like what, uh, what, what's the logic behind what they're, what they're, what they're saying and look at the studies and then, hey, try it myself too. Because I, I'm in this for the long haul in the sense that I want to be training and competing for as long as I possibly can. And so I could win a, a world title and I could win some fights and you know, do all kinds of fun stuff. But I won't be able to do that if my body breaks down. You know, right. like if I, if yeah. I wear out my joints because I'm just overtraining and I'm not recovering enough and all that. So that's what I'm, uh, all that to say that I definitely like to like, um, you know, uh, guide you a little bit, you know, or give you some suggestions on how to work out and see if it works on you. Cause I, I'm trying it out myself. I, I think there, I, I really think there's something to it, you know, but I can't say for a fact yet because I never train anybody in this particular style. And, uh, so I'm doing it on myself. And then also it's, it's, it'd be kind of hard to find somebody to, because you have to build up to it also. Right. I can't just make somebody who, who, uh, who doesn't have any training experience do this type of workout because they'll essentially die. And then from there, they'll be, dis- not die, but they'll be in pain and then right. they'll be discouraged. And nobody could, not everyone could push themselves at that intensity at the beginning. You kind of have to build up to it. So everybody's different. But um, all that I'm saying is that I'm, I'm excited about this newfound discovery for myself. Like this information has been around forever, but I, I've, I've recently discovered. So it's new to me. So I'm like, Man, if this is what it is, 
you know, like I'm on to gold, <laughs> baby. I'm on to I'll, I'll, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, I'll get so good so fast. And imagine I train, I do like 130, 115. Yeah, 115 minute, 15 minute uh, session per week. And I get big and strong. And then after that, well, skill development is skill development. So when I train my martial arts, that's when I focus on my skills. But getting big and strong, 15, 30 minutes a week. Yeah, well, and it's definitely not going to take up too much of your time if it turns out to not work. I mean, it was only 15, 30 minutes a week, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what's to lose? No, and I, I've tried everything else, you know. And, and the th- here's the thing. Like, a lot of things you do are going to work. But the thing is, <clears throat> is it... You know, but what if you could get there with a lot less work in less time and in a safe manner and something that's right. actually sustainable, you know, like, w- yeah. wouldn't you rather do that instead? But if you buy into what everybody's telling you, which is no, 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 you gotta, you gotta train uh, minimum uh, three times a week, two hour sessions, you know, and then on top of that, you gotta do your martial arts and then you gotta periodize. So you gotta mix up your trainings so that when you get to competition, you peak blah, 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 blah. It's, it's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot of, um, uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of volume there. So obviously people, you know, get discouraged or, you know, they get injured along the way and then they just like, ah, you know, F this. Right. 